So we're trying to resurrect the balance lead on this Traxxas battery. This this is a pre-ID battery. It's a two-cell. Oh no, this is yeah. This is the this two is the two-cell. Two yeah. yeah, this is the two-cell, seventy-six hundred milliamp hour, but it's before ID connector. And the problem with it is that there's a break internally somewhere. The balance lead is disconnected. So I'm trying to peel it back. Take a look. I've always been afraid to do this, but the tank RC is here, and he's willing to take a look. <laughs> I'm, wi I'm willing to shock myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So basically, you see that how they've done it. They, they've wrapped uh, a piece, and the foam is right there at the end. So this yeah. is just to protect it. Yeah. So now what I have to do is I have to cut this out, and then we'll put another piece of electrical tape okay. later to put it back. So now I basically have to cut this without cutting, without cutting the cell. So you can do that pretty easily by just cutting it s softly. Yeah, just a light touch. And then so you cut it. So it's foam or tape? There's there's a tape, but then you'll have a piece of foam there. See, now this okay. is the protecting stuff. I want it to stay in there because yeah. it sticks on. This is just tape that goes over this, okay, okay. just to save it. So now I have to take this off, and then I got to do the same thing on the other side. So let's peel it back, and then all the wires. So there should be one little wire going to each cell, right? Yep. But there's more tape to peel back before you can see it, I guess? Yes. You, so this is just tape that they put just to stop it from getting shock or whatever. But this is just like almost electrical tape, so you can get that back either okay. also. Now, don't try this at home if yeah. you don't feel comfortable. Yeah, That's or why I've never done it, because I was never comfortable doing this. But. And don't try to do this in the basement, because if ever it starts shorting, it yeah. won't blow up. Yeah, just we're in the garage, start. so we can just throw it outside if we yeah, have to. Yeah, I'm going to throw it on the concrete floor. Yeah. So I can't get buzzed or shocks or anything, but just in case it does go. So you can see here one of the, the lead is actually off the of broken one yeah so that's probably the only one that's broken and then how and then we need to figure out what cell that went so to. i need to figure out where it was connected usually you can actually see uh, little a little tab or where is it was actually connected is that a metal plate covering up and, and this is the, the 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 stuff i told you that is very hard to solder so you need your a very hot iron to actually melt this oh so this is the one that's very hot. So you have melt. to remove that to get it the... No, you just, I just got to find out where it was connected. Okay. And then connect it, re-solder it. Okay. So it might be on the other side. All right. Anyway, well, there, yeah, that's why that balance lead doesn't work. So okay. we're just trying to determine where the balance leads go. So I've got my little uh, tester on and we've got a white and a... We've got a red and a black disconnected. But if we hold them on to the main power leads, the blue wire was still connected, so we're getting now a balanced charge. Shows one one cell's 4.19, the other one's 4.12. So that will work if we just solder it onto the main leads. That's not where they're soldered on from the factory, but it seems like that would work. Fine. Yeah, I believe it was soldered like there right on the edge there. Little tabs. Yeah, yeah, right on the edge. Yeah. And anyway. these are so flimsy wires. Yeah, but. it's for something that gets used and touched so much. I wish they would use thicker gauge wire. Yeah. This is what I was telling you, that it really takes a lot of heat to reheat that other one. So it makes sure that it yeah. sticks on. I've got my base station on max, right? Yeah. Or it's got a little bit more to go, maybe. So the red's done. We can turn it up a bit more if you want a bit more heat. I'm just tinning. He's just tinning the lead right now. Trying. We've got a vice. we are got the old vice oh, thing yeah. <laughs> to hold up the this battery. High quality uh, setup here. I chatted with Traxxas about what they offer for battery support and it's you pay to mail in the battery and then they will charge you half the price of a new one to exchange it oh yeah but that's full retail value in u.s money i figured i could end up buying a no-name battery for some with similar specs for that half the price of a new traxxas one because mm -hmm. if they send me back a new traxxas one it's going to be an id connector wow all so right let's give so that a test see if we got, see if we got continuity uh Wow, working, 4.19, 4.12, sweet. So, so now that, if you don't mind having tape holding their battery together, yeah, black tape. Yeah, we just got to put some protection tape back on it to make sure nothing will short. They do sell some heat shrink that you can actually buy and put it on top of it, but then again, it becomes a, an expensive part yeah, okay. to actually do. Sweet, so that's essentially repaired now. And uh, should we put some solder on the blue one? How loose was the blue wire? Yeah, we could have a look at it real quick. Okay. So, 
So now there's your foam piece that goes on top of it. Yeah. So this is where yeah, so I cut it. we didn't cut it right off. We just peeled it back. So we yeah. were able to put back most of the protections in place and, and then just seal it back up again with some tape. Yeah. And then it should be it should be good. These yeah. batteries are from 2012. Oh really? So and but they've been good to me. They're 7600 milliamp. I've been I've been happy with them. It's just they get and the leads get worn out. So we're now taking a look at a 4S Traxxas ID connector battery that would no longer detect ID, and that's because two leads on the inside have broken. The black we were, one. And we were trying to determine if there was a, a chip inside that determines cell size and voltages and whatnot. We can't find anything so far, but there are two leads that are broken. The red one on that side is broken off, and the black one on the other side is broken off. And that's just from, you know, repetitive stress of moving the wires around. And these batteries are not that old. These 6700 4S's only came out in late 2016, I believe. They're less than two years old for sure. They're probably only one year old and they've already failed. So not too impressed with that. Granted, I did get these batteries used, so I don't know what life they had before they came to me, but. Yeah, but it's still their ID. They are ID. and they So they're should, not that old. Yeah, they're not very old at all. So we're gonna peel back and see if we can get this resurrected. Frank has proven to work his magic. We have one ID battery which has been resoldered. There was two brakes on cells and he safely peeled them back and resoldered on a red and a black lead and we've now got ID charging working. And working on the other 4S LiPo, we're just in the process of, no, this one's the 2S. That's 2S. This one is the, is the 2S that had the balance lead completely broken off and missing so I've scavenged a balance lead off of another wire and we're, we're adding it in now, so. Thank you very much to Frank from the Tank RC, go subscribe to his channel. Check don't. out check out what he can do with RCs. Don't come to me to fix your batteries. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so this is don't try this at home situation, but uh, he's done this before and had success. So I asked if he would be willing to try it again on mine. And so far it's working. I just hate to throw these away. If that's the only problem that I was having with them is that none of them were balancing properly anymore seems like such a shame to throw away hundreds of dollars in batteries just because of that. Yeah. Anyway, we're covering up the other leads to make sure that we can't cause any shorts. So make sure you don't cut off that protection film. Just peel it back. Just so, slit it and peel it back so, so you can still so cover actually, it up afterwards. Yeah, I covered back to cover the red. And yep. then when I did the red, I peeled it back and covered yep. the, this So that's one. how you can cover them. And so far, they do not have a lead going to each cell that we've needed to fix. Almost all the breakages so far have been the main red and black wire that go to the two main power leads. Yeah, this one was completely broken off. Yes. But so the blue one is on already? Yep, You've already one. done all three? Yep, all oh, three is done. Look how efficient this guy so is. He's already fixed it all. Blue one's done. Wow. So yeah, the blue goes to the central tab and then the red and the black connect to each red and black lead. That's for 2S. Yeah. Now for this ID4S, it was a similar situation and we're perplexed as to how that can even work as there doesn't seem to be enough wires to detect 4S, but it's working. So whatever, leave it up to magic, it's working again. All right, we've now found out why I couldn't use these batteries anymore. We have one cell that is a critically low state. Like you don't want to ever take them below three volts. I have one cell that's at 0.9, 0.94 so I'm gonna try and have to blast that with some voltage but the problem is the other cell is almost at max so I'm not sure how I'm gonna manage with that but try and nurse it up see if we can get it going but so far it's now reading balance so I can try and, and get it working again so we're just closing this battery up it has been fixed wiring wise but we're just covering up the cells with just electrical tape we're wrapping, we covered up the foam the stock foam is still here we just cut it flapped it put it back, taped it down, and now we're wrapping around the inside and then we'll go over it again just to seal it up where you're not having any cells exposed. Yes. You do not have to worry about water sealing your battery. That is that is not a thing. Water always gets in here. You just I want as less dirt you as just possible. Wanna, yeah, you just want to seal it up enough where nothing can get poked in there, nothing can short it out. Dirt and debris can't get in there, but it doesn't have to be water sealed. That's, so, uh, yeah. I'll put so another we'll piece there and then and, I'll wrap it around again. And that again. battery's fixed. So far, out of the four batteries that I was having troubles with, uh, two of them, two of them are fixed, and two of them have one cell that is very low. Two of them, ha two of them have one cell that's at 0 0.8 to one volt. So those might be KO. I'm going to have to look at how to resurrect those. But so far, two out of the four batteries have now been repaired. So thank you very much, to Frank. 